Hello and welcome to Shred Show. I am your host, Chris Grow, and this is the internet's most experimental surfboard show, where today we're giving away a DeKind Super Light Pad and an Eric Gieselman Pro Pad. I mixed that up. More details on how you can get your hands on one of these later in this episode. But first we begin with a quote from a surfer you may have heard of. I don't know what it exactly does, but it feels good. Rob Machado talking about his signature fin from Futures. The point is that if you understand a lot about Bernoullian or Newtonian physics, then you can understand how fins work in a surfboard very easily. But in the end, all that we're really after is a feeling under our feet. If you want to find out how different fins feel under your feet, call up the surf shops in your area and ask if they have any demo fins. Many surf shops have fins by Futures and FCS that you can try out for free so that you don't have to understand all the complex theory behind why surfboard fins work. Today I brought a board bag full of goodies and we're going to have a very simplified discussion on how surfboard fins work in a surfboard. If you are a physicist or a hydrodynamicist, that's not a word, please chime in with your expertise in the comments below. Also, if you're just a regular guy who really likes surfing, please tell us your experiences on any of the fins that we talk about today. And to help us in our discussion, we're going to bring back an old friend from episode 23, the Hayden Shapes Hypto Crypto. For the sake of an easy conversation, we're going to boil your fins performance down to five simple characteristics. If you follow this, you'll know more about fins than 95% of surfers out there, unless 95% of surfers watch this video, in which case you'll all only know more than 5% of surfers. We're gonna start with base. If you have a wider base on your fin, if the distance from here to here is longer, that will create a more drivey surfboard. Drive is most common thought of as how you come off the bottom, and if a surfboard is very drivey, it has a lot of forward projection. So drive equals a wide base in a surfboard fin. If we have a thinner base, that means the board has less drive and it has more angle up towards the lip. It doesn't do quite as good of a job at giving you speed moving forward, but it does a really good job of bringing you back up towards the lip. If a fin has a lot of depth, depth meaning the measurement from the base down to the tip right here, the total depth that it goes down into the water, that means that the board will have a lot of hold when you're up in the lip because the fin is deep in the water, it's anchored in the water, and you will feel the wave holding on to you when you hit the lip. If a fin is not as deep, if the distance from here to here is less, that means that the board will be more loose up in the lip and the fins will want to release. If a fin has a lot of sweep, if this angle comes back like this, that means that the board will not have a lot of pivot when we do turns on the shoulder, it will do wider arcing turns. And if a fin has less sweep, if this tip didn't end here and instead ended like right here, then the board would have more pivot out on the shoulder. It wouldn't do as wide an arcing of turns, but it would do tighter turns. Next, the flex of a fin. If a fin is really flexy and we have it in our board, we feel this wind up slingshot sensation when we push it through turns on the face of a wave. That's because if we have a fin up here in the front fin position and we push it into a turn like this, the tip of this fin, if it has a lot of flex, is going to be bending back towards my face. And then as we push out of the turn, that fin will flex back to normal and kind of slingshot us out of that turn. Lastly, we'll talk about foil. Foil relates to the shape and the curvature of the fin on each side. If you take out one of your thruster fins that would go back here, you will notice that it has a curvature on each side. I'm oversimplifying here, but essentially when you think of convex on each side of the fin, that means stability. And when you think of convex on one side of the fin and flat on the other side, that means excitement. The stable fin goes back here for control, and the excitement fin, which has a flat side, or in some cases, an inside foil, goes on the sides because these fins are what promote release and turning in the board. Now, the first set of fins that we're going to talk about specifically are these Rob Machado fins, because they're the first fins that I ever tried the Hypto Crypto with, because I basically have this fantasy that I weigh a lot less than I do. These fins are designed for a medium-sized surfer, which I definitely am not. By the way, every fin that we talk about today, we will post a link down in the YouTube information to show the corresponding weights for each one of these fins and their ideal performance. Now when we look at these fins, the first thing that we'll test is the flex. And when you're testing flex, always push away from the direction that you're turning. What I mean by that is if this fin goes in places right here, and then we go into a turn, and we're turning our surfboard like this, this fin right here is carrying the bulk of the pressure of our turn, and the tip of this fin is bending towards my face. So when we're turning, that's the kind of flex characteristic that matters to us, is the way that the fin is going to bend away from the surfboard. This is a very flexy fin, which initially tells us that we're going to experience that slingshotting sensation through our turns, but it also tells us that the board might not be really responsive to our needs for speed. The thing about flexy fins is when you push on them in a drive situation where you want to generate speed off the bottom, the fins will flex. 
If a fin is stiff, you can push that fin against the water and it will immediately push back and propel you forward. But with a flexi fin, there's a little bit of a lag and it won't be totally responsive to your demands for speed right in that moment. But as we continue feeling this fin, we can feel that it has an inside foil right here. That means that it's foiled on the outside in this convex kind of a way, similar to the deck of a surfboard when it's domed like this. And then on the other side of the fin, it has this inside foil where it actually concaves in. What that does is it helps the fin generate speed and it buys us the right to have more flex in the fin because we're counteracting that flex in a drive situation that might hurt the fin being a bit responsive and we're buying speed with this inside foil. Now comparing this fin with one of my favorite fins, the AM2 template by Futures, this fin does not have as much flex to it. It's a stiffer fin. It has a foil on the outside here and it has a flat foil on the inside for where we put it here on the rail. This fin also has a much wider base. It has more depth. The measurement from here to here is deeper in the water and it has more of a sweep. What this adds up to is a very responsive fin when we come off the bottom in a drive situation because of how wide the base is. And when we hit the bottom of the wave, we can hit the tail of the board and really project it forward very easy for increased speed. If these two different fin sets were both made for someone of a large size, and if I could use these fins totally interchangeably and if they fit my height and weight, I would use the AM2 templates in situations where I knew I was gonna have to generate a lot of speed on my own off the bottom if I needed drive to beat sections. If I was surfing a slower, more cruisy kind of a point break, I would surf the Rob Machado fin because it might not be quite as responsive coming off of the bottom to give me that forward projection, but it would give me an awesome sensation coming through my turns if it was a point break type of a wave that allowed me to take my time and cruise on it. Craig Anderson surfs this board with the Rob Machado fins, but the fin preference that I have is AM2 fronts with the Rob Machado thruster fin. That's because I've primarily been surfing this board in waist to head high waves just because it's summertime and I really like how I can so consistently and reliably generate speed and drive using the AM2 templates and I really like the decreased size and increased flex of the Rob Machado thruster. What that does is it kind of gives me a twang when I'm up in the lift. It has a perfect mix of hold and looseness. It also has a perfect mix of pivot when I'm turning on the face. It's not a super tight pivot, but it's definitely not a long drawn out pivot. I also get that drive coming off of the bottom, but I don't get so much drive that it's pushing me past those nuggety sections. It's just enough drive to help me beat sections in smaller waves and get up to the lip where I can do these twangy little turns. If you don't know what twang means, it's just kind of a word that I made up to describe how this board feels. Again, fins are all about how things feel under your feet, so the more fins that you try, the better off you're going to be. Now, as I said before, a double foiled fin where it's convex on both sides of the fin, the type of fin that you would normally associate with being in the thruster position of your surfboard, that equals stability, whereas a fin that has a convex on one side and flat on the inside equals excitement. Well, we're just gonna try to illustrate what that means with an example. And we're gonna use an old friend from episode six, the Channel Islands Weirdo Ripper. First time that I surfed this, I set it up as a quad because I was most interested in riding this board as a quad. And because I love how these fins feel to me, I started out with the AM2 fronts. Then I put in these Tim Stamps quad trailers. These trailers are foiled on both sides of the fin, so we don't get a foiled side and a flat side like we normally would with a fin that would be up here in the leading position on a thruster. What we get instead are two quad trailing fins with convexes on either side of each fin. One of the biggest differences between surfing quads and thrusters is the way that they feel when we push them into a turn. Traditionally, when we push a thruster into a turn, we can initiate that turn pretty easily and flow all the way through it in one consistent kind of a motion. But when we're surfing a quad, getting into that first third of the turn, we really have to push it off of the direction it's already headed, and then the second two thirds of the turn come pretty easily. With this fin set up, what I found is that I was feeling a bit too much stability moving forward, and getting off of those tracks as I was going down the line was just a little bit too hard. So I switched things up and put in these new Futures prototypes. The difference between these Stamps trailers and these prototypes is that these are convex on the outside edge of the fin and they're flat on the inside edge of the fin. So I put these in the trailing position and immediately went out surfing again that same session. 
When I set up the fins like this, it totally changed the personality of the surfboard. Now I could pump down the line just as easy and generate speed using all the surface area that a quad setup gives you, but I could initiate that first third of the turn so easy. It was just like butter. It's just like going down the line, you're pumping, wah-ha, and you can turn really, really simply. What this fin setup gave me was all that speed and drive of a quad that I wanted out of this board, but it let me get into turns super easy because of the way that the flat inside foils promote the release of water. Now here's where things get really interesting for me. When I'm surfing a Hayden Shapes shred sled, which we've also featured on Shred Show, and we'll put a link to that episode in the YouTube info below, I really like surfing the Tim Stamps trailers. That's because the quad box placements on the shred sled are closer to the stringer. So if I'm on a board and it's a quad and the boxes are closer to the stringer, then I really prefer having double foiled trailing fins with convex on either side of the fin. I'm curious to know if any of you feel the same way, and I really want to know if any of you have surfed any of the fins that we're talking about, so please tell us your experiences on any of the fins that we've discussed today in the comments section below on YouTube. And Shred Nation, this brings us to you possibly getting hooked up by Dakine. Get on Instagram and upload a photo of your board with Dakine traction, or a photo of your board with no traction. Hashtag that photo, grip my shred stick. And at the end of the week, Shred Show intern Dave will be picking one of you to send some new traction to, courtesy of Dakine. And for more ways to win, go to shredshow.com and subscribe to the Shred Nation. At the end of the week, we'll be picking one email address to send a traction pad to as well. If you've ever surfed the Rob Machado fin, the AM2, or the Tim Stamps quad, please tell us about those experiences in the comments below. Also, if you've ever surfed the Weirdo Ripper with any different fins, or the Hayden Shapes Hypto Crypto, please tell us about those boards. We really look forward to seeing you next episode. May the waves be up wherever you are in the meantime.